Hi, this presentation is about time dilation. I'll be trying to derive the time dilation equation. I'll also try to give you an example of how it might be applied. So why is time dilation important? It's a concept that needs to be understood so that the derivation of relativistic mass increase can be comprehended. The concept of relativistic mass increase leads us to Einstein's special theory of relativity. So you basically can't get to Einstein's special theory of relativity unless you understand time dilation. Now to describe time dilation, I'm going to use an experiment of the mind. And in this particular experiment, I have a truck driver and a girl. The truck driver and the girl are stationary relative to each other. The truck driver is in a truck and at the back of it there is a compartment. The walls of that compartment are transparent. Now both the truck driver and the girl can see the goings on inside that compartment and anything they observe inside that compartment, uh, any measurements they might make relative to what goes on inside that compartment should concur. There's a light source at the roof of the compartment. The, the uh, distance from the light source to the floor of the compartment, let that be known as H. A light pulse emanates from the light source and strikes the floor of the compartment. So as I mentioned previously, the girl and the driver are stationary relative to each other and they're stationary relative to that light source. I'm expecting any measurements or observations they make to concur. Let the speed of light be known as C. Now according to Einstein's second postulate, that's a constant irrespective of the observer's frame of reference. The speed, as always, the speed of light, as always, is equal to distance divided by time. And the speed of light is equal to h, the distance covered, divided by t0. Now t0 is the time it takes for the light pulse to move from the light source to the floor of the compartment. And both the truck driver and the girl would agree that the light pulse covers that distance h uh, in a length of time t0. Multiplying both sides by t0, you get h is equal to c times t0. So from now on, in any further calculations that I make, I'll be replacing that distance h with C times T0. Now, what would happen if we change something? We, we uh, make the truck driver move forward. So, the change is as follows. The truck driver moves horizontally relative to the girl and he's moving horizontally with a constant velocity. So the truck moves horizontally a distance d relative to the girl. Now from the truck driver's perspective, he still thinks the pulse of light has traveled a distance h and took a length of time t0 to travel from light source to the floor of the compartment. But the girl's perspective is somewhat different. She sees the light pulse traveling a longer distance than before when the truck was stationary. Now the truck driver moves horizontally with the truck and with the light pulse. He thinks the light hasn't traveled horizontally relative to him. He only sees pure vertical motion by the light pulse. But the pulse has traveled horizontally relative to the girl. Now let the constant horizontal velocity of the truck 
relative to the girl be known as V. Now V is equal to D divided by T. Now that's actually the formula for average velocity, but I did mention before that the velocity of the truck is constant. Now the average velocity uh, has the same magnitude as the velocity when the velocity is constant. Multiplying both sides by t, I get d is equal to v times t. And that's the distance that the girl sees the truck moving horizontally. And that black line represents that distance d. That distance d moved by the truck, but it's also the horizontal distance moved by the light source, moved by the light pulse, as seen by the girl. And let it be known as V times T. That green light, sorry, that green line represents the displacement, the magnitude of the displacement of the light pulse. It's the total distance covered as seen by the girl. The total distance covered by the light pulse. Now, let that distance be known as C times T. The speed of light times T. And T is the time as measured by the girl, the time taken by the truck to move that distance D. That blue line is just that distance h. We worked it out before. It's c times t0. The truck driver believes the light pulse was in motion for a length of time t0. The girl believes the light pulse was in motion for a length of time t. I've got a right angle triangle there. I'll be applying Pythagoras' theorem. So what I've done in that equation is I've taken the length of the base and squared it and I've added that to the square of the length of the height and that is equal to the square of the uh, length of the hypotenuse. I've minus v squared t squared from both sides. I've taken out t squared as a common factor. I've divided both sides there by c squared minus v squared and now I'm going to change the way I express that uh, fraction by multiplying it by 1. Now, I won't change the value of it, but look at the way I've expressed 1. That fraction, which is equal to 1, uh, has been expressed as 1 on c squared over 1 on c squared. That won't change the value of anything, but it'll change the way I express things and there's a bit of a change there and I see um, c squared over c squared appearing and wherever I do see c squared over c squared I replace that with a 1. Now the expression looks like this. I'll square root both sides. I'll obtain the positive square root of the right hand side and what I have is the time dilation equation. I've derived it. Now let's see whether I can apply it. Now some beta particles move very quickly and they're ejected from radioactive nuclei at 0.9 times the speed of light. Now in that equation, that time dilation equation, I'm going to replace V with 0.9C. So there's that time dilation equation. I've uh, introduced 0.9c. The c squared cancel and 0.9 squared is equal to 0.81 and uh, 1 minus 0.81 gives us 0.19 and that can be further simpl simplified to give us 2.294 times T0. Now let's suppose you have a, a stationary scientist 
and he, is observe he or she is observing a beta particle move at 0.9 times the speed of light. And the beta particle moves a distance d relative to the stationary scientist. Now according to the scientist, at rest relative to the moving particle, the beta particle would have taken a length of time t to cover the distance d. However, if there was some sort of measuring time measuring device on the beta particle, it would have measured that same time to cover that, that distance it would have measured that time differently. It would have measured that time as T0. So to the stationary scientist relative to the beta particle, the beta particle would be moving through time 2.294 times faster than the stationary scientist. So if the scientist observing the beta particle measures this movement. He or she would believe that the beta particle would be moving for approximately 2.3 seconds. However, during that same process, the beta particle would have aged just one second, while the scientist would have aged actually 2.3 seconds. And what I've also done to the right there is I've tried to draw a graph to illustrate how T changes. Um, versus V on C and uh, you can see an asymptote there uh, with equation V on C is equal to 1. So that's the end of my presentation.